So this is chapter 38 of the Elfstones of Shannara. Let us begin. We're almost done the book, really. Look how much we got only left. It's awesome. Okay. Dawn broke gray and sullen over the wilder run, draping the forest land in shadows that spread like bloodstains across the dark earth. Clouds massed the morning sky, hanging still and deep over the valley, and an expectant hush filled the air, warning of the approach of a summer storm. Atop the ridge line, Cafello and his small band began their descent of the hills, following the trail that would take them back down to the main roadway and a continuation of their journey toward the hollows. The rovers went from the Hebel's camp as they had come, like shadows strayed, the horsemen leading the single wagon that bore Will and Amber Lee, hands raised, and brief farewell to the old man who stood wordlessly before the little hut and watched them depart. Slowly they passed into the gloom of the forest, massive trees wrapping close about them, until all but the streamers of light were shut away and there was nothing but the roadway, narrow and rutted and dark, burrowing down into the depths of the valley. By mid-morning they had reached the main road again and turned east. Mist began to gather on the valley floor, sifting through the trees as the day grew hot and the cool of the night turned to steam. Will and Amberly rode in silence with the old woman, thinking of what lay ahead. There had been no further conversation with Hebel, for they had slept soundless soundly that night, and with their awakening, Cafello had made certain that the old man had kept his distance from them. Now they found themselves... Now they found themselves wondering what more he might have told them had he been given the chance. As they pondered this, Cafello rode back to speak with them, yet the smile and the conversation seemed forced and lacking any real purpose. He appeared several times more during the course of the morning, and each time it was the same. It was almost as if he were looking for something, yet neither Veilman nor Elven Girl had the slightest idea what it was that he might be seeking. Eretria stayed away from them entirely, and while Amber Lee was mystified as to the Rover Girl's sudden change in behavior, Will understood it all too well. It was nearing midday when Cafello signaled a halt at a narrow crossroads somewhere deep in the forest. In the distance, thunder rumbled ominously, and the wind blew in sudden gusts that shook the trees and scattered leaves and dust. Cafello rode back to the wagon and stopped beside Will. This is where we part company, healer, he announced. He pointed to the crossroads. Your way lies south, down the smaller road. The path is clear. Simply stay on it. You should reach the rim of the hollows before nightfall. Will started to speak, and the rover quickly held up his hand. Before you say anything, let me advise you not to ask that I go with you. That was not our bargain, and I have other obligations that I intend to satisfy. I was about to ask you if we might have some provisions to take with us, Will informed him coolly. The rover shrugged. Enough for a day or two, no more. He nodded to the old woman who stepped back through the door of the wagon. Will watched the rover shift uneasily in his saddle. Something was bothering Cafello. How will I find you to pay you your share of the reward? He asked suddenly. Reward? Oh, yes. Uh, Cafello seemed to have forgotten it momentarily. Well, as I said before, I will know when you have been paid. I will seek you out, healer. The veilman nodded, rose, and stepped down from the wagon, then turned back to help Amber Lee. He glanced at her briefly as he lifted her down. She did not feel any easier about the rover's behavior than he did. He turned back to Cafello. Would you give us a horse? One would... Cafello cut him short. There are no horses to be spared. Now I think you should be going. There is a storm coming. The old woman reappeared and handed Will a small sack. The veiled man slung it over one shoulder and thanked her. Then he glanced up at the rover once more. A safe journey, Cafello. The big man nodded. And a quick one to you, healer. Farewell. Will took Amberly's arm and led her through the gathering of horsemen to the crossroads. Eretria sat astride her bay. 
A retreat sat astride her bay, black hair blowing wildly as the wind swirled past her. When the veiled man reached her side, he stopped momentarily and extended his hand. Goodbye, Eretria. She nodded, her dark face expressionless, cold and beautiful. Then without a word, she rode back to join Cafello. The veiled man stared after her a moment, but she did not look at him again. He turned to the pathway leading south, dirt blew into his eyes, and he shielded them with his hand, squinting into the gloom. With Amber Lee beside him, he started to head. Hebel spent the morning at his workbench behind the little hut, hunched over a carving of a swamp cat. As he worked, his mind drifted back to the events of the previous night to the elflings and their strange quest, and the warning he had given them, which they had ignored. He could not understand it. Why had they refused to heed him? Certainly he had made it clear enough that it was death to go into the hollows. And certainly he had made it clear as well that the domain of the witch sisters could not be violated. What was it then that could prompt this brother and sister to go there for nothing more than some obscure root medicine? Then it occurred to him that perhaps there was something more. He thought about that for a moment, and the more he thought about it, the more plausible it seemed. After all, they would not be so foolish as to entrust a rogue like Cafello with the truth. No, not that young man. He was too quick for that. Safe hold lay within the depths of spirit's reach. What sort of roots would grow deep within a mountain where no sunlight could ever reach to nourish its growth? But magic had once been done within safe hold, the witch sister had whispered to him. Magic from another age, lost and forgotten. Did the elflings hope to discover it again? Overhead, the sky darkened further as the storm rolled out of the far country. The howl of the wind in the trees rising to a higher pitch. The old man paused in his work and looked up momentarily. This would be a big one, he thought idly. Another bad sign for those elflings who would be caught in the open, for the storm would overtake them before they reached the hollows. He shook his head. He would go after them if he thought it would do any good, but their minds were obviously made up. Still, it was too bad. Whatever they hoped to find in safe hold, be it root medicine or magic, they would have been better off to have forgotten it entirely. They would never live to use it. At his feet, Drifter lifted his shaggy head and sniffed the wind. Then abruptly a dog growled, low and deep and angry. Hebel stared down at him curiously and glanced about. Shadows fell across the clearing from the forest trees, but nothing moved. Drifter growled again. The heckles on his the back of his neck rose. Hebel looked around guardedly. There was something out there, something hidden back in the gloom. He stood up reached for the broad axe. Cautiously, he started toward the trees. Drifter crouched beside him, growling. But then he stopped. He did not understand why he stopped exactly, except that suddenly he felt something cold slip into his body, chilling him so badly that he could barely stand it. At his feet, Drifter lay on his belly and cried as if he had been struck, his great body cringing. The old man caught a glimpse of something moving, a shadow, massive and cloaked. There, one moment, then gone. A fear passed through him so terrible that he could not find the will to thrust it from him. It gripped him cruelly and held him fast as he stared helplessly at the dark forest and wished with everything that was left within him that he might turn and flee. The axe fell from his hands and tumbled to the earth, useless. Then the feeling slipped from him, gone, as quickly as it had come. All about him the wind howled, and a spattering of rain struck his leathery face. Drawing a deep breath, he reached down for the axe, and with Drifter close against him, backed slowly away until he felt his legs brush up against the workbench. He paused then, one hand gripping the neck of the big dog to keep himself from shaking. With frightening certainty, he knew that, in sixty years of struggling to survive the dangers of the valley, never before had he come so close to dying. Will and Amber Lee had walked for less than an hour when the storm overtook them. 
a sprinkling of heavy drops that slipped teasingly through the dense canopy of trees turned quickly to a downpour. Sheets of rain swept across the pathway, driven by a west wind, and thunder boomed and reverberated through the sodden forest. Ahead, the gloom of the narrow trail darkened further with the rainfall, and water-laden trees' limbs began to droop about them in damp trailers. They were soaked in minutes, bereft of the travel cloaks which had which they had failed to recover from the rovers along with the rest of their clothing. The light garments they had been fitted with in their stead clung to their bodies. There was nothing to be done that would ease their discomfort. However, so they simply put their heads down and walked on. For several hours, the rain continued to fall at a steady pace, save for occasional brief lulls that gave false promise of an end to the storm. Through it all, the veil men and the elven girl trudged on, water dripping from their bodies and their clothing mud caking on their boots, their eyes fixed on the rutted path ahead. When at last the rain did slow and the storm moved eastward, mist began to seep out of the forest and mix with the deep gloom. Trees and brush shone dark and shiny through the haze, and water dripped noisily in the sudden stillness. Overhead, the sky stayed clouded and dark. To the east, thunder rumbled, distant and lingering. The mist began to deepen, and the pace the travelers slowed. It was then the pathway began to slope downward, a slight dropping off that at first was barely perceptible, but gradually increased. Veilman and Elven girls slipped and skidded in the muddied earth as they followed it down, peering hopefully into the gloom ahead yet finding nothing more than the dark tunnel of the road and the closure of the trees. The stillness had grown even more pronounced. Even the faint sounds of insects singing at the pass in the storm had faded into silence. Then suddenly, so suddenly, that it was as if someone had removed a veil from their eyes, the trees of the woods split apart. The slope dropped away and the great dark bowl of the hollows lay spread before them. Veilman and Elven girls stopped where they were in the center of the muddy trail and stared down into the awesome expanse. They knew at once that they had found the hollows. This massive pit of black forest could be nothing more, could be nothing else. It was as if they had come upon some monstrous dead lake still and lifeless its dark surface grown thick with vegetation so that what lay beneath its waters could only be guessed at from its shadowed center rose spears reach a solitary column of rock thrusting up into the gloom barren and pitted the hollows were bleak like an open grave that whispered of death the veil men the elven girl stood silently upon the realm finding a sense of revulsion that grew with each passing moment that they gazed down into the soundless gloom. Nothing that either had ever encountered had looked so desolate. We have to go down there. Will ventured finally, hating the idea. She nodded. I know. He cast about hopefully for a way to proceed. Ahead, the trail appeared to stop altogether, yet when the veilman walked forward a bit, he saw that it did not end after all, but split to either side to wind downward into the shadows below. He hesitated a moment, studying the two paths, trying to decide which would provide the easier descent, then chose the one that ran left. He held out his arm to Amber Lee, and she gripped it firmly. Lee in the way, he started down feeling his boots slide as the damp earth and rock gave way in clumps. Amber Lee stayed close, leaning heavily on him for support. Cautiously, they moved ahead. Then abruptly, Will lost his footing and went down. Amber Lee fell with him, tripping forward across his legs, tumbling headlong from the muddy path to disappear with a sharp cry into the wooded darkness. Frantically, Will scrambled after her, pushing his way through the heavy brush that ripped his clothing and cut his face. He might not have found the elven girl at all, but for the bright silk of her rover clothing, a splash of red against the dark. She lay lodged against a clump of scrub, the breath knocked from her body, her face smeared with mud. Her eyes flickered uncertainly as he touched her. Will? Will? 
He eased her into a same position, cradling her in his arms. Are you all right? Are you hurt? No, I don't think so, she smiled. You're pretty clumsy, you know that. He nodded, grinning with relief. Let's get you up. He put his arm about her waist and lifted her clear of the scrub, her small frame feather light, as he set her back on her feet. Instantly, she cried out and dropped back to the earth, reaching for her ankle. It's twisted. Will felt along the ankle, checking the bones. Nothing broken, just a bad sprain. He sat down beside her. We can take a few moments to rest and go on. I can help you down the slope. I can even carry you if it becomes necessary. She shook her head. Well, I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful. You? I was the one who fell. He grinned, trying to appear cheerful. Well, maybe one of the old man's witch's sisters will come along to help us out. That is not funny, Amberly frowned. She looked about uneasily. Maybe we should wait until morning to climb down any further. My ankle might feel better by then. Besides, even if we made it down before dark, we would have to spend the night there, and I don't much care to do that. Will nodded, nor I, nor do I think we should try to find our way about at night. Daylight will soon be enough. Maybe we should go back up to the rim? She looked at him hopefully. The bell man smiled. Do you really believe the old man's story? Do you think there are witches living down there? She stared at him darkly. Don't you? He hesitated and then shrugged. I don't know, maybe. Yes, I guess so. There is very little I don't believe anymore. He sat forward slowly, arms coming up about his knees. If there are witches, I hope they are frightened of elf stones, because that is just about all the protection we have left. Of course, if I have to use the stones in order to make them afraid, we may be in a lot of trouble. I don't think so, she responded quietly. You still think I can use them? Don't you? Even after what happened on the Pikin? Yes, but you shouldn't. He looked at her. You said something like that once before, remember? After the turfing. When we camped above the Myrmidon, you were worried for me. You said that I should not use the stones again, even if it meant saving you. I remember. Then later, when we fled the Pycon, I told you that I could no longer use the stones, that their power was lost to me, that even elven blood was not strong enough. You told me that I should not be so quick to judge myself, that you had confidence in me. I remember that too. Well, look at what we have been saying. I think I should use the stones, but don't think I can. You think I can, but don't think I should. Funny, isn't it? He shook his head. And we still don't know which of us is right, do we? Here we are, almost a safe hold, and I still haven't found out. He stopped suddenly, realizing what it was that he was saying. Well, it's not important. He finished, looking away. Better that we never find out. Better that they be given back to my grandfather. They were silent for a moment, almost without thinking, Will reached into the rover tunic and lifted out the pouch that held the elf stones. He fingered it idly and was about to return it again when he noticed something odd about its feel. Frowning, he opened the drawstrings and dumped the contents into his open palm. Oh, man. He found himself staring at three ordinary pebbles. Will! Amberly exclaimed in horror. The veiled man stared at the pebbles in stunned silence, his mind racing. Cafello, he whispered finally. Cafello, somehow he switched these for the stones last night, probably while we slept. It had to be then. They were in the pouch that morning in Grimpen Ward. I checked. He rose slowly, still talking. But this morning, I forgot. I was so tired last night, and and you fell asleep almost at once. <sighs> he must have drugged the ale to be certain I would not awake. No wonder he was so anxious to be rid of us. No wonder he made light of Hebel's warning about the hollows. He would be happy if we never came back. The reward meant nothing to him. It was the elf stones that he wanted all along. He stared up the trail, his face livid. 
Then abruptly he remembered Amber Lee, turning quickly back. He lifted the elven girl in his arms, held her close against him, and scrambled back to the room of the hollows. For a moment he looked about, then walked to a clump of high bushes several yards so back. Stepping beneath the shelter of their boughs, he set the elven girl down. I have to go back for the elf stones, he declared quietly. If I leave you here, will you be all right? Will, you don't need the stones. He shook his head. If we have to test that theory, I would prefer that it be done with the stones in my possession. You heard what the old man said about the hollows. The stones are all that I have to protect you. Amberly's face was white. The fellow will kill you. Maybe. Maybe he has gotten so far up the trail by this time that I won't even get close to him. But Amber Lee, I have to try. If I don't find him by dawn, I'll, I'll turn back, I promise. With or without the elf stones, I will be with you to go into the hollows. She, sta she started to say something more, but then stopped. Tears ran down her cheeks. Her hands lifted to touch his face. I care for you. She whispered, I really do. He looked at her in astonishment. Amber Lee. Go on, she urged him, her voice breaking. Cafello will have stopped for the night, and you may catch him if you hurry. But be careful, Will Olmsford. Do not give your life foolishly. Come back for me. She reached up to kiss him. Go quickly. He stared at her wordlessly for one instant more then sprang to his feet. Without looking back, he ran from her, and in seconds had disappeared into the forest gloom. So that's basically it, guys. It's chapter 38. We will come back and do chapter 39, hopefully very soon. And I will talk to y'all again, and thank y'all for visiting Tab's Cottage. Okay, guys. Bye! <laughs>